Chirro. President and the Commander in Chief of the EFF, Commissars and Fighters, Deputy Speaker, President, I stand here on behalf of the EFF for the very first time to respond to your stale, empty, and meaningless State of the Nation address. Today, 25 years after the attainment of political freedom, the face of poverty, of landlessness, unemployment, homelessness, of poor health, of abuse, is still largely black. It is young and is most likely women. In your address, you only mentioned this identity once. You, Mr. President, have sold your soul to the captains of the industry, who are wholly white and are men. In return, you have made it your mission to sell dreams to the people on whose ticket you now occupy your office. While you are dreaming, sir, black youth are unemployed or languishing in jail because of your failure to secure their future. Black grandmothers are raped daily with under 2% chances of ever finding justice. And black people in general are still landless. They do not have the luxury to dream as your white cotton wealth allows you to. I'm infuriated by your tone deaf attitude to thousands of lesbian women subjected to corrective rapes and facing their tormentors in the streets because our criminal justice system cannot protect those who sex differently. Your government, Mr. President, is responsible for many and the most heinous of crimes. You jailed Kanya Kageshe, you jailed Boinkosi Kanyile, and are complicit for the brutal murders of Benjamin Petra, of Pongani Matonzela, just because they asked for a free education that you promised them when they were still toddlers in 1994. You have over a million Deputy. students across all universities, but you can Speaker, only accommodate just under 130,000 students. Where honorable must the rest honorable stay? Member. Hold on. Without any intention honorable to build member, honorable Chirua, honorable Chirua, when you are spoken to, you stop speaking. Uh, yes, honorable member. What are you raising on? Deputy, Press the button there. Deputy Speaker. Yes. The speaker on the podium said the president is complicit in murder. Yeah. I think that is unparliamentary. Yeah, it's sustained. It's correct. Honorable member, withdraw that statement. Honorable member, withdraw the statement. You listen to the presiding officer. On a point of order, Deputy Speaker. What's your point of order? She never said that. She said Honorable that member, the government is complicit in murder. No. There's Honorable, a court ruling about affirming that saying here in a joint city. Honorable Shivambo. Because when it was said by the commander in chief that the ANC government killed Honorable Shivambo. That was affirmed by a court that is permissible speech. Honorable Shivambo. But also it's out of tradition. No, Honorable Shivambo. You speeches. are wrong. You that house, that chairperson. Honorable member. It's out of order. Yeah. You must allow. Honorable Shivambo. Honorable Naledi to. Honorable, Honorable Shivambo, now. Honorable Shivambo, you are wrong. Honorable Chirwa, withdraw that statement. O on a, on a point of order. On a no. point of order, Deputy. What's your point of order? Deputy Speaker. Yes. Deputy Speaker. We hope... The What's your point of order, sir? You no. keep quiet, Honorable Members. You keep quiet. Chief Whip, you, you see allow Deputy your Speaker member to speak. Honorable, what it did. Honorable Member, go him. ahead. Deputy Speaker. Yes. On two bases, we call a, 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 a point of order. One, a maiden speech cannot be interrupted. And that you have allowed. And secondly, a Deputy Speaker, where there is um, no certainty and there is a dispute about remarks and utterances in this house, in the best interest of this house to flow and the debate, refer it to Hansard and allow the poor speaker to continue. Honorable Don't be disruptive okay. as you were in the past Honorable Deputy Parliament. Speaker, and Honorable now you are order. starting a Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Gadi. Order. Ah, no. Honorable, Honorable Gadi. Speaker. Please Can we be seat. saved from you? Yeah. On a Honorable, point of order. Uh, Honorable, Honorable no, Can I make a ruling here? Please. Honorable Chiro, withdraw that statement because it is out of order. If, and I plead with you to do so, Peace.
withdraw the statement. On a point of order, Deputy Speaker. No, I have ruled on this. There's no, three of you. You must Honor ask her if she said Honor it or not. You cannot say she must withdraw. She has oh. not confirmed to have said that. Honorable she member. She did not confirm I, that. You must I, ask her. Honorable member. Stop being emotional, man. No, 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 no. Honorable member, I have sustained the ruling. I have heard the member, and I'm asking her to withdraw. I mean, it, it is not a lie that no, Honorable member, Pesha Honorable member, and you Bongani don't do that. Honorable, Honorable member, for Honorable free education. Order, Honorable member, it is not a lie. On a point you of are, order. I'm going to switch off this on mic. Point of you order. are going to have to get off the podium on if you are not prepared order. to withdraw. Fine. You withdraw. Fine. Let's do this. With, oh, with, hold on. With, hold on. Withdraw. Honorable. We'll deal with this one later. Or, 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 or. Honorable member, Honorable Shivambo. Withdraw for now. We'll deal with it. Honorable Shivambo, you are not a presiding officer. Take your seat, honorable member. I withdraw, withdraw the statement. Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Without any intention to build new universities or expand the capacity of the current universities and TVETs, where do you want all these learners in South Africa to go? I will also take this time to remind you and your colleagues, Mr. President, of Tandi. Tandi is the black girl born in 1992 that Trevor Manuel oh, used to illustrate speaker. her positionality when he presented the IMF-imposed neoliberal NDP point of order, during his time speaker. as Minister of Planning in 2011. The point NDP order, has deputy failed deputy to locate Tandi. Point Today, of Tandi order, is excluded. Honorable, honorable member, what are you raising, honorable member? Thank you very much. A point of order, the conduct of members who come to parliament in terms of the gallery. The former member who's sitting up there Who's taking pictures? Who is not supposed to be in the house? The media Deputy Speaker. Wow. Deputy uh, Speaker. Honorable members in Deputy the gallery, you are welcome. Deputy but Speaker. please don't break the rules. Deputy uh, Speaker. Go ahead, Honorable Member. Deputy Speaker. Allow your speaker to proceed. Oh, no, member. on a point of order. Don't allow these people who are suffering from jealousy to disrupt this uh, young, brilliant no. black woman Honorable from Rose, delivering a speech. You this is a maiden speech. You are disrupting this her This is yourself. a maiden speech, Deputy Speaker. Yes. Can and you, you are, please give her a chance? And you are, no, Honorable You're Member. You're jealous, man. Take your seat. She's outshining you. You are out of order. You are out of order. Honorable members, allow the member to speak. On a, on a point of order, speak. What's your point of order, honorable member? We are asking you to protect her. It's a maiden speech. Honorable member. Please protect her, and you are not doing that. Honorable member, you raise point of orders in the middle of her presentation no. yourselves. No, no. Just like, just no, like no. all other members are raising points of order. No, what the I rules mean? require that we must listen to anybody in the house who raises a point of order. Please She's no different. A point of order is raised in the house. It must be listened to. We no. can't assume that it can't be said. Please they take would, yourself, they, allow they, her to proceed. Deputy Speaker, a point of order is called of people who are doing something in the gallery. You have not seen them yourself. Hon you, you call them to order. Honorable you have member. not seen what she's talking about. Instead of telling her to sit down so that you protect the speaker, uh, you'll I'll, sustain her. I'll order. invite you Please in future, Honorable her. Malema, I'll invite you in future to help me make orders in the House. Not today. Honorable member, proceed. Today, Tandi is excluded from Rhodes University for protesting against rape culture. Tandi is financially excluded from completing a qualification because your NSFAS did not pay for her last year of study. Tandi was turned back from a clinic because of shortage of contraceptives. Tandi then fell pregnant and was again turned back from hospital because the waiting list for abortion services can stretch out to over five months. Tandi is now the one in four women who will live in absolute poverty for the rest of her life for having kept a baby she did not want and couldn't prevent caring because of your government, Mr. President. Tandi is one of the 1,200 young women who got infected with HIV today, despite numerous global efforts available to prevent this from happening and your failure to have it accessible for Tandi in Tawu. Tandi was protesting outside parliament demanding health rights for her fellow domestic workers a few days before your address, Mr. President. Tandi is on Nyaope, and she will commit suicide before the new dawn because of depression. Tandi is also landless. Tandi is a rape victim living with her rapist in the same house because your police officers lost the docket.
Tandi is unemployed and will remain unemployed for the next decade because you, Mr. President, cannot cater for her needs in your job creation plan that rules out 80% of unemployed young people for the next decade. All these social ills and failures of your government reproduce the kind of violence our country is associated with today, and you have not the slightest idea of how to resolve this. Let us therefore tell you what you should consider once again. The state must ensure 50% women representation in all spheres, representing economic benefit, political participation, managerial and leadership responsibility. The state must introduce compulsory gender education and training for all, from school level up to the highest level of all public services. The state must introduce compulsory education of police on gender justice and establish specialized law enforcement units to deal with women-related crimes. The time for meaningless frameworks and commissions on the gender question has long expired, Mr. President. Introduce a special inspectorate in the Department of Labor to monitor, report, and enforce gender parity and equality in the workplace. Don't just talk decriminalization of sex work if you do not mean it. Stop unfair discrimination against LGBTQI individuals when they want to adopt children in need. Decommodify basic needs such as education and health so that they are driven by need and not maximization of profit. Your focus on health should be on primary health with commitment to attainment of universal health care coverage, quality clinics with strong immunization and vaccination programs, prevention, promotion, and education oriented primary health care. Protect and promote informal traders and allow them to trade in the streets of Bramfontein, Centen, Headfield in Pretoria, Sea Point in Cape Town, and taxi ranks where women vendors get threatened with rape every day. And lastly, Mr. President, lastly, if you are unable to do all of these things, move over and allow Tandi and other fellow young people to wake up South Africa from this nightmare you have collectively subjected us for the past 25 years. Honorable uh, Zungula. <laughs> That is what you wanted to prevent the best addressed thus far.